And yeah, no reason not to improve our condition these days. Yeah, they certainly seem to be getting much worse. That would be pretty bad, although in this case, like... In a lot of these things, it's like, why is it that all these disasters are localized to... It's usually either... Well, they're always localized to the country where the game or movie is made. But here you actually kind of have a reason for it, because the experiment that released all these shadows happened right here, so... Yeah, it makes sense they're only around this area. And hey, it's Hidetoshi. I'm not gonna see you there, unfortunately. An announcement, huh? Mm, I don't know. What are we gonna say? I have an announcement. I hereby declare that everyone is guilty. But Fuka, definitely someone that we are interested in seeing. Well, if you have something important to tell him. And he's gonna go for it. So yes, today we are seeing Fuka, though this rank up is actually a little weird, and it's the reason why we need to accept that Sunday date. You'll see why in a moment. And yeah, Kenji has no longer has an exclamation mark. His link is completely finished. So, we know where Fuka is, in her usual location. I'm pretty sure I already talked to Yandere-chan here, but... In case I forgot to show it. Anyway, time to speak to Fuka. So, even though it says this, we actually don't strictly need a matching persona for this meeting. You'll see why, like I said, once we get into this one. Once again, the rooftop. Which was where the link began, actually. It's sort of coming full circle now. Actually, we've been on the rooftop for a lot of the rank ups here. Oh, wow, that's definitely an improvement. Well, yeah, that makes sense. So, the special thing about this rank up, there are two questions here. For both of them, you can say anything, and you get no points for this entire conversation. Nothing gives you points, they're all zero. So, you can basically say whatever you want. And that's why no matching persona is required here, technically. Because zero multiplied by 1.5 is still zero. So I kind of see the first half of this link could easily work with a system like Persona 4 where you can choose whether to be platonic or romantic. The second half, as you'll see, definitely not though. Speaking of true feelings though... Improve our relationship, he's listening. So, this might seem a little anticlimactic, but in the context of Japanese, this is a really strong statement. <laughs> I just love how this fits in with my headcanon so much. He just immediately just walks forward. <laughs> oh, Gary Stu, you... <laughs> you complete sleaze. Anyway, so this is rank 9 of the Priestess Arcana, 
And as you could see, well actually, we haven't got to the second one yet, but this entire conversation doesn't give any points. You need 55 points to reach rank 10. The thing is though, a matching persona on a Sunday date will give 45, and a present gives a bare minimum of 10 points. So if you have a present for Sunday's date, we can actually get her all the way to max the next time we meet her. So, that's what the phone call is for. And you can say anything here, they both give zero, but might as well do this. So, yeah, that's that rank up. Dude. Hey, uh, Gary Sue is very close to scoring. Speaking of scoring, yeah, things are definitely going pretty badly at this point. Well, yeah, don't count on good, getting good news at all. The news is always like that. I'm pretty sure these people are saying the exact same things they were before. <laughs> and wow, this really dates this game, doesn't it? Uh, I kind of... I'm not kind of. I really miss video stores. There is just so... Well, this is a oddly fantastical way of dealing with a... Um, yeah. Uh, there were so many games that I never would have gotten into if it weren't for video rental stores. So it's kind of a shame that they're kind of gone now. So yeah, this... Um, the dispute was resolved to both men's satisfaction when, uh, the video store was viciously murdered by Netflix. <laughs> uh, it's kind of a shame because, like, while there are things like that that have kind of invalidated video rentals, game rentals, there's not really all that many. I mean, I think there are some services online that kind of let you quote-unquote rent games, but... It's not really the same, like, there's nothing really the same as old video rental stores, and it's kind of a shame for, like, gamers like me, because now, if I have a game that I'm not really sure if I, if I, if it warrants buying or not, I still have to buy it outright if I want to play it, so with some games that I'm undecided on, I need to wait for sales or things like that. Something's still very wrong with Ken. But, yeah, it's just still kind of a shame. But, I suppose that's how it goes. Just seriously, there are so many game series that I would not have even got into if it weren't for video rental stores. I mean, let me just give a brief list. Brief list. Ratchet and Clank, Sly Cooper, Jack and Daxter. Uh, it's a Friday, so let's see the monk. Final Fantasy XII. Those are some of the main ones off the top of my head. Thankfully, all of the rental games that I played were on consoles that use memory cards, so... Oh, right, speaking of which, uh, other games that I... I, I know I, I rented a lot of GameCube games, like, um... Oh, okay, one GameCube game that I rented back in the day that I'm really annoyed that I never bought, F-Zero GX. Though I did play some of that semi-recently, and I was... I really sucked at it, but... Yeah, I, I, that, that's, that's one of the games. A lot of the old GameCube games that I did end up renting, I did end up finding secondhand or other things like that. But F Zero GX, that game still eludes me. Ridiculously hard, but still insanely fun. I believe I only ever unlocked two of the secret characters that you got by clearing the story missions on very hard mode. Ah, uh, that one where you had to escape the bomb down that straight corridor. I once failed that mission by, like, literally hitting the goal as the timer hit zero, which, yeah, still fails. Yeah. Anyway. Okay, so yeah, Mr. Edagawa is filling in for maths class. And so here, uh, we get this conversation, which lets me explain a few other things from my childhood, actually. Because some of this stuff on numerology I actually knew about when I was younger. 
mostly thanks to a series of books called Murderous Maths. I don't know if anyone here read those, but they had a lot of really weird maths facts. So anyway, including stuff that Pythagoras did. So yeah, a lot of people know him for his theorem, but Pythagoras had a fairly weird number cult as well. Though, one thing that he doesn't mention here, they, they considered that one was the exception. It was the mother and father of all numbers. Which, in a way, makes sense, given that one is a factor in everything. Yeah, this thing about holy and unholy numbers. Okay. Yeah, I've heard about this too. I don't know how this works for me because I have two middle names, but anyway. I'm also not sure how this works for Japanese names because, I mean, either you'd have to, like, romanize them, although there are different ways of romanizing them, or if you can assign numbers to kanji somehow. There are thousands of kanji, so... You'd have to do a lot of this digit adding for some of the higher ones. So yeah, by doing all this, which I believe is called a digital root, you get something between 1 and 9. I still love how that trick of if the digital root of anything is 9, then the number divides by 9. So yes, test time. <laughs> and this thing about numbers haunting you even in your sleep, this was actually the subject of a chapter in one of those murderous maths books. To be fair, there are some numbers that are extremely bizarre and kind of terrifying, like pi going on forever with no repeating pattern, or the square root of negative one, a number that simultaneously exists and yet doesn't exist. But anyway, I love this because you get the option to say the tetracar. <laughs> uh, for those who don't realize, this is the name of the physical reflex spell in this game, so that's pretty hilarious. So, I wonder if this method is ever used to determine, like, the persona arcana of people. So the vowels reveal your inner self, the consonants get the persona you display in public. Yeah, I have heard that using some particular dates can cause very weird results there. Yeah, I've heard about things called friendly numbers, where, um, or amicable numbers sometimes, where the, if you add up all the factors of the numbers, they add up to the other number. And I still like perfect numbers, which, uh, their factors add up to themselves, which, is for some reason, uh, they are completely useless. Like, completely useless from a mathematical standpoint, but they're kind of fun. I was never really that great at maths overall, but I do like some of these facts. So anyway... Now, today, I believe we are, in fact, seeing... I'm pretty sure that we see Yukari today. Okay, so we actually do see Yukari today, I was right. And this time, I do have a magic persona, but once again, I don't think it's actually important, because this, again, only gives zero points, regardless of the options you say. So, once again, zero times 1.5 is still zero. But this time we're at Polonia Mall, and, uh, hey, Nozomi is not actually there. Instead, there's an old man. Unless that's Nozomi and he got hit by innovation status. Oh, and, um, that's <laughs> just... Yukari's suggestion for karaoke just, um, it's like, uh, yeah, I'm sorry, but we are karaoke out. Seriously, we've done enough karaoke for one lifetime. It's always sad when things like this happen. And yeah, thankfully we're right near a police station, and we know the police officer who works there, so... That helps. You know, I was about to say that kids these days, like, not to ruin this or anything, but kids these days would probably have mobiles and be able to actually get in contact with their parents like that. Though, then again, I mean, if the, what I heard about the Pokemon Crystal mobile adapter is anything 
kids in Japan had mobiles long before it became commonplace in the West, so maybe at the, yeah, the time the game was set, they would have. But yeah, clearly, by this point in the plot, you can tell why Yukari has issues with parental abandonment. So yeah, you can say anything here. Oh, yeah, right. That must be pretty hard considering what you've gone through. And, okay, so seeing this line, to go off topic again, this really makes me think of a certain game that came out at the tail end of last year. I won't say exactly what game that was, because spoilers, just in case people haven't played that, but I think some people might be able to tell what I'm talking about. Huh. Now replace boyfriends with girlfriends, and who does that sound like? Yeah, well, it must be hard if her father passed away and then her mother's kind of gone off the deep end because of it. So, we are at rank 3 now of the Lovers Arcana. This one progresses quite slowly. As you can see, this one gave no points, so we'll probably need to spend time in order to push it up to 4. At only rank 3? Really? Uh, don't worry, I'm, I'm pretty sure we don't either. Though... If she considers her mother to be a terrible person because she has a bunch of boyfriends at once, uh, well, yeah. <laughs> Irony. Sup, dude? And uh, yeah, we are back here, and not much for us to do. So, guess who forgot about a Shinjiro walk and had to reload a save? Good thing I keep a lot of saves from earlier in the game. So yes, tonight we can walk with Shinjiro. Normally we'd see the tower social link tonight, but yeah. We have to do this instead. Well, I guess so. Then again, I mean, he was... I would say he was playing in a labyrinth for a while, but uh, did that really happen or not? The thing about Shinjiro saying don't take your health for granted, there's kind of a story behind that in a way. So, yeah, according to the official art book and some other developer information, the reason why Shinjiro still wears that heavy coat even during the hotter months is because the side effects of his persona suppressant drugs make it so that his body can't regulate its own temperature properly. Yeah, that's actually pretty disturbing and also sad. But yeah, that's why he wears that coat all the time. And, uh, no, I'm not accepting this phone call, because then Fuka would immediately reverse. So, time to sleep. Gotta get ready for that big date tomorrow, after all. So, yeah, something that I mentioned before... Make sure that you have a present for this day. This is the only date in the whole game where you act. Well, if you're following the Max Social Links run, this is the only date in the whole game where you actually specifically need a present. Because, like I mentioned before, you need 55.x rank up. And having a matching persona with answering the date correctly gives you 45. And the bare minimum number of points you'll get from a present is 10. And that's enough to push it to 55. So, you pretty much need, um, any kind of present is okay. Uh, 
Uh, uh, yeah. Um, speaking of that horrible person thing, um... Uh, uh, no, Gary Stu totally isn't dating every female character in this game simultaneously. Wait, what? Ah! Ah, so it's the cake that was designed with Gary Stu in mind. Yes. Yes, it's a very clever name. It's totally not... You know, maybe this is Igor subliminally <laughs> telling Gary Stu something. <sighs> yes, nice conversation starter, and totally not completely true. So, yeah, we're gonna give her a gift. I hope that on this file I actually bought this item, because under flowers is the glass vase, which is actually one of her favourite presents. That is the absolute maximum number of points you can get from a present, but you just need any present, because the bare minimum that you get is 10. And 10 is all you need. Now tonight... Welcome back. So tonight, well, I mean we can catch Phoenix Ranger Featherman or Thankfully, they're showing this on a repeat, I guess, on the next episode of Phoenix Ranger Feather Man R. Episode 32, Wings Return, the Demons Overstay Their Welcome. And, of course, Morath is intro. You know, it's kind of like our, the demons we're fighting are certainly overstaying their welcome. Well, yeah, I suppose so, but we have no need for the restaurants because we've already maxed out all of our attributes. So, people aren't down here. That means it's probably time for another amazing episode of Junpei's Suggestion Box. Doesn't look like Mitsuru's here, though. <laughs> oh, well, I guess so, but then... I still like the idea of a Super Full Moon Shadow boss rush. That'd be pretty awesome. Maybe, but I don't think it's just his environment. Ken is still in his room, and he's still talking to himself. Yeah, if only he was a social link and could actually talk about his problems to other people. Well, yeah, I guess since there are only three shadows left, they are going to be going all out to stop us. And, well, we're almost basically done training. So, let's go out. We already walked you yesterday, but uh, you want to go again tonight. Again, all of these are only for flavour, but we have nothing to lose by doing them, seeing as we've got nothing really productive to do on these nights anyway. Well, I mean, except see the um, tower link, but we've got plenty of time to finish that off. <laughs> yeah, I mean, considering Koromaru is the fastest in the party. Although Akihiko did get freakishly fast in Persona Q, which... He was actually pretty powerful in that game. Oh yeah, that must have sucked. Everyone does seem to be obsessing over the past at this point. And wait a minute, it's late night, it's seven days before a full moon, I think we all know what's going to happen. <laughs> I could have chosen to study just to spite him, but anyway. Yep, here it comes. We've grown wise to your antics by now, mysterious creepy boy. We know exactly when you're going to come to creep us out. Good evening. Yes, yes, evening. It is no longer good since you're here, but evening. 
I'm sure I don't have to tell you this, but there's only one more week until Yeah, the yeah, you've been moon. doing this for the past several months now. It's really starting to get annoying. We know by now. I hope nothing serious happens. But who knows what the future will bring? Yeah. So be careful. Remember, I'm always watching you. Alright, now you're just trying to be creepy. We'll meet again. I think by this point he knows and he's just intentionally trolling us. Anyway, let's put that out of our mind for now, because this coming week, we're going to max out even more social links, starting today. Only six days to go. Yeah, don't worry, we're going to put an end to it soon. Only three to go. And they do have a tendency to come in pairs, so it might be even quicker than that. We're almost through this. Oh, it's you again. How long has it been since we last saw you? And I, by undefined, you mean the universe explodes. Okay, can we start a petition to make Mr. Edogawa our official maths teacher and get you just kicked out? Because, seriously. I'm really tempted to actually sleep in this class because this is incredibly boring, but... I might as well. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Edogawa said the exact same thing and made it a lot more interesting. Sorry. So, who's going to come up to us at lunchtime today? Oh, okay. This actually makes a lot of sense. Which is already blushing. Uh... For what reason? She wants to spend some time together. She's nervous and she's blushing. Looks like Gary Sue's hit the jackpot again. And that was the only one who visited. Okay. Because in fact, today, thanks to that present, yesterday in fact, you saying anything new at all? Yeah, I, you're saying the exact same thing about the culture festival. Because today, yes, it's time. It is time to add one more waifu to the harem. I am so sorry, Fuka. And we don't strictly need Pavati. And so it begins. Now, in this case, her room is right at the dorm. So... Gareth is going to have a tough time explaining this one. Let's make sure that nobody sees them. They're going to have to be extremely stealthy, and he's also going to have to make sure Fuka doesn't get suspicious of him being extremely stealthy. Also, he's going to have to make sure not to tell Fuka that he's seen this room before when he pervertedly watched a video of her. Yeah, just act surprised about this whole room. I mean, it's kind of realistic that she's just going off on extremely weird tangents. People do tend to do that when they're really nervous about this kind of thing. <laughs> really, because this isn't the first time Gary Sue's, uh, yeah. Let's not go there.
And shame this just had to happen with the wrong guy. And I suppose we'll say this. And so, like always, we need a max social link item. This one's actually kind of cool, though. Yeah, these are actually custom-built headphones, which is pretty awesome. It'd be kind of cool if the sound quality suddenly went up when that happened, but... Anyway, yeah, we have, we have no option to really... Yeah, we just outright say, don't worry about that at all. And with that... We've been hearing this music a lot lately. We have now mastered the Priestess Arcana. <laughs> it's so we went it's a party member and it says their name specifically. And this means that we can cheat on her as much as we want with no repercussions! Ugh. Yeah, the social link system in this game is really annoying. But with the Priestess social link maxed out, we can now create Skaha, the teacher. I really hope that I said that right. Skaha originates from Celtic mythology, and was the mentor of Ku Hulan. Another persona that we've seen at this point. Ku Hulan went to train with her because the father of his great love wouldn't let him marry her unless he'd completed his warrior training. However, that's when things got really weird, because upon meeting Skaha, Kuhalan had an affair with her daughter, killed said daughter's lover in a duel, and had to make it up to Skaha by taking over the lover's duties. Eventually, Skaha promised her daughter to him, uh, yeah, let alone the fact that he was also promised to someone else, and to make things even more complicated, she then slept with him when he finished his training. And it gets even weirder, because later on, Skaha's rival threatened her territory, so Kuhalan defeated her, essentially raped her, and uh, she had his son, who he later killed, not knowing was his son. Yeah, that is one extremely weird backstory. Let's just take all our minds off that by focusing on Skaha from a gameplay sense. Skaha is, well, extremely weird. Her stats are pretty good except for terrible endurance, and she's got a lot of resistances and only one weakness. Her skill set, on the other hand, is pretty bizarre. It's an odd combination of magic, physical attacks, and support. What I like to think here is that all of the skills that she has are all pretty good on a more specialized persona. Power Charge is a great skill on anything physical, Invigorate 3 is a fantastic skill on anything magical, but Skaha kind of tries to be both, and personally I feel that it doesn't really work all that well. I think that Skaha suffers from a skill set that tries to do too much, but runs afoul of, I guess you'd call it, 8 move slot syndrome here. There's just not really enough move slots to be this much of a generalist. It's kind of a similar problem to what a lot of people have with Ken. The issue though where I think this is different is, that while Ken is a sole party member who only ever has one persona, so that one persona being quite versatile is sort of an advantage, 
The protagonist has the ability to swap between multiple personas on the fly. As such, I feel like having one persona that's just a generalist that uses a whole bunch of random different skills is not really that useful because you could instead have 12 specialized personas and essentially get the same thing but more because you can swap around between personas during your turn. The other strange thing is that despite the normal priestess affinity towards ice magic and Skahar's access to quite a wide variety of different skills, her inheritance type is Pierce, so she's most likely to inherit physical skills, which is not her highest attacking stat. I feel like she'd benefit a lot more if it was ice. Though I should mention, Skahar has, as you can see, a fusion spell. Naturally, this one is with Kuhulun. The name Shadowhound is a reference to both of their names. His name has Hound in it, and hers is Shadow, so hence Shadowhound. It does heavy strike damage to all enemies, though it only has a power rating of 300, which for a fusion spell is actually not that high. To put it in perspective, the skill Vicious Strike, which does strike damage to all enemies, is 340. The only difference being that Vicious Strike is slightly less accurate, and Shadowhound has a bit higher of a critical chance, but only very slightly. It's 5% critical. I mean, having a physical attack that costs SP rather than HP is kind of decent at times, but even then, this is far from the best fusion spell out there. All in all, I personally find Skahar to be one of my least favourite ultimate personas. I wouldn't say that she's a terrible persona at all. I mean, she's got pretty good stats and learned some pretty great skills. The main issue that I have is that the skill set is a little bit all over the place and kind of doesn't really specialise in one area, tries to do a little bit too much. Having both Power Charge and Invigorate 3 is actually pretty great for fusion fodder, but when an ultimate persona is restricted to that as their main use, that's actually pretty sad. Anyway though, I am not saying this is a bad persona, if you like this one you can still use it, it's pretty much fine, just it's not my favourite personally. Though I actually just realised, using Skahar to pass down skills to other personas actually really fits her mythological background as a mentor. Well, I mean, Gary Stu lives here anyway. Gary Stu scores again. And now he has to find out how to get out of the room and make it look like he's arriving here naturally so no one else sees him. I'm guessing he went out a window at some point. Hey. Well, at least Shinjiro's not suspicious. And, yeah, he's probably more preoccupied with that. So, uh, with that... And you're still saying the same thing. Yeah, wait until next year for a culture festival. Uh, too bad this game only covers a period of one year. But at least we did... Wait. I was about to say, we did have a culture festival in another world, but... Oh, I just can't remember it. Anyway. This conversation's actually pretty funny. Huh. I wonder if that old lady was someone who calls herself Death. Probably not. Yeah, we've got to be prepared. Three to go. Everyone's psyched up. It's pretty much in a week. How are you doing, Ken? You ready? Yeah, let's do our best. What's on TV? Uh, I don't know. I mean, in some ways, they're pretty much harmless. If anything, it's other people who are harming... who are a threat to them. Is he really not nervous, though? I don't know. So, we've now maxed out yet another social link, so... Uh, though we did save kinda recently, so... Maybe we... 
I was about to say we can go out tonight, but it's a Monday. That means there's only... Well, I mean, there is the punching bag. I suppose we could try the punching bag. Let's see. Although... You also have power charge. I could potentially get your strength almost on par with your magic, so I'm going to take you. Because I foresee me using that persona, or Kuninushi, quite a bit in this next boss fight. It has Mataru Kaja, which is amazing. Also power charge, physical attacks. Pretty great all round, actually. I will say, just, just as a heads up, you might want to get personas that are resistant, preferably immune to wind for the next boss fight. But it's not 100% necessary. You don't really have to deal with wind attacks that often. But it's a plus to have some kind of resistance to it. And it's going to be a while before I can actually check how much of a stat boost I got there. I just realized, can you imagine if, if uh, Okuninushi had Getsui... Getsue plus power charge on a full moon boss would be pretty amazing. Welcome back. <laughs>